Modern CSS allows us to do things that were literally impossible in the past, and in other cases to reduce something that might have been five lines of CSS into one or two. And we're gonna be looking at how they help us make responsive designs so much easier than it used to be. Hello, my front end friends, and welcome back to another video. I'm so glad that you've come to join me once again. And if you're new to my channel, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I help you fall madly deeply in love with CSS. And if I can't make you fall in love with it, I'm hoping that I can at least help you be a little bit less frustrated with it. And I really do think that min, max and clamp are three amazing CSS functions that we have these days that do make writing CSS a lot easier and also just a lot more fun and interesting as well. So let's dive in and see what we can do with these guys. All right, so here I have this very very simple demo that we're going to be looking at for all of these, but these are things that you could use all the time. Yeah, you'll notice here is my main content and I have a container here that we usually hold use to hold our content and on there often on containers, we're setting a few different properties and we can actually, uh, you might have some padding, some margin, a width, a max width, different things like that. And with a container now, what we could do is only do it with two different ones and we can do it with width without needing a max width on it because we can use the min function. And the min function means choose the smaller of two available options. So one of those smaller ones, uh, we'll say, just for this example, we'll say 90%. And I'm also gonna throw, we'll say, I don't know, a thousand pixels at it, just for simple demo purposes. Uh, this probably be RAM if I was working on a real project, but to keep it simple, and we can see that it's actually stopped there. And let's just throw a border on this. We can actually see that it's working. So uh, we'll do, uh, three pixels, solid, hot, pink. And there we go. So we can see it's actually at 90% or 1,000 pixels. It's probably at 1,000 pixels. Um, and let's go and check it out. So I am in Firefox. Control-Shift-M will open this responsive mode. Uh, if you're in Chrome, you can open your dev tools first. And then as long as you're active in your dev tools, then you will be able to open the responsive mode with the same shortcut. And you can see as I go smaller, 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 it shrinks and it's following at 90%. And then when I get to this maximum size here that we lock in and it's no longer getting bigger. So what's smaller, 90% of the parent, which is the viewport in this case, or a thousand pixels. So if small, a thousand pixels is smaller, we'll use that. Or if 90% is smaller, it will use that one. And then we obviously want it to be centered. And this is not a comparison function. This is a logical property, but I'm gonna do a margin inline of auto. And the margin inline of auto is only setting the left and the right, and it's not touching the top and the bottom. So there we go, we can set that and it stays centered. And we have a nice container there in a bit more of a modern CSS approach. And obviously we could change this value and it is whatever you need it to be. And then let's look at the next thing I want, which is setting things like margin and padding. And in my thing here, I do have this dark background. I'm gonna focus on that guy for now. So dark background, uh, let's do two things on this. We're gonna set a background of 333, which is nice and dark, and we'll set a color of white, just so we can actually read the text that is on top of it. And now one thing with margins and padding is sometimes you, you, don't, you want them to be a little bit less locked in, and even maybe this header area could be a really good use case for this as well, but we'll focus on this one for the moment. And uh, let's, we want some padding on it. And so traditionally you might just do one rem of padding and there you go. You have your one rem and you're good. But often as we increase the screen real estate we have, sometimes, you know, we can also increase the padding or margins on things. And so we'll look at this for both padding and margin. Uh, but for on my padding here, let's say instead of one rem, we could come in with a max function. And this is the opposite of the min that we have right here. And what the max enables us to do is choose the bigger of two different values that we're throwing at it. And so for something like this, we could come in and say 10 viewport height or one rem. And that means choose the bigger of the two of them. And obviously I've exaggerated it a lot right now um, just for the demo. But that means as my viewport gets smaller, notice you can actually, and right now it's shifting on the left and the right too, which is a little bit weird, but you can see it's actually getting smaller and smaller and smaller as my viewport gets smaller and smaller because the 10 VH is a bigger value than one rem. And so let's try like a three VH. And this is really, you are entering a world where you have to experiment and play with the numbers to find something that works. But now you can see that it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger as my viewport height is increasing. We're giving ourselves more and more padding. But then if I decrease, decrease, decrease at one point, that will stop shrinking and we're gonna get locked in. And let's just do this so we can see it again. And you see it won't actually keep on getting smaller. Whereas if I just set this with 3VH, and I save that, 
as this gets smaller and smaller and smaller, that space is continuing and continuing and continuing to shrink. But with my max function on there, it means it's going to keep shrinking until it gets to this one rem. And then now that one rem is bigger than 3vh, so it actually stops it from shrinking. And so I think that's pretty handy and pretty cool. Now, you don't necessarily want it to do both sides at once. Here you could have like a 1.5 rem that's locked in on the sides. That's never changing, but our one on the top and the bottom is going to grow and to shrink based on the space available. And on a small element like that, that could be perfect. But on a large header like this, if you wanted to have more space and have it much more aggressive in how that's working. So you could have a really big thing, but as the screen size is shrinking uh, or somebody switches into portrait mode or something, it really adapts. But it makes sure that you always maintain a minimum amount. And as I said, you could also do this with margin. So let's just say it's margin bottom only and you come in with a max. And again, we'll exaggerate a little bit. Uh, maybe we'll do five this time, five VH and do a two rim. And so once again, we can see that the margin bottom there is going to, as there's more and more screen real estate, because I'm dragging way off my screen right now, uh, that has continued to grow. But then as we shrink down, shrink down, shrink down, at one point that will stop shrinking when we get locked in at that two rem size, which should be coming up any moment there. And now it has stopped shrinking and we get locked in at that two rem. So another cool way we can use uh, a comparison function. So we have our min function there, our max function there. And before we move on to the third resource, I just do want to let you know that if you like these little tidbits and little things like this, I'd really recommend that you check out Small CSS by Stephanie Eccles. I've put the link to it down in the description below. She also has more in-depth articles at Modern CSS uh, as well, which I'll link down in the description too. They're just two fantastic resources on modern approaches to CSS problems that we have. And now we're ready to go into our last one, which is clamp, but I just looked at one resource or two resources. I'm gonna look at another one for using clamp. And I'm just gonna look at these two font sizes in particular, which are my H2 and my H3 and H3. And so I'm gonna start just by looking at a very basic version of clamp, but then we're gonna look at how we can create a whole type scale with it um, using a cool resource. And so here, let's come in with a font size of clamp. And clamp is a little bit like min and max, but instead of two values, it takes three values. You don't only have to use this for font sizes. This is where you most often see it. But you could also use that for your padding or margins where you're actually clamping a minimum and maximum potential sizes. So if you have a really higher growth factor, it could also be really useful to clamp it and stop it from growing and getting too big at different screen sizes as well. And so let's just say we have a one rem. I'm gonna do a 10 viewport width plus uh, and another thing, I'm using VH and VW here, which are viewport width and viewport height, which is generally what you use these with, uh, which is the most common use cases you'll see these with. Uh, but one option too is your Vmin and Vmax, which are kind of weird. But if you want to know more about those, I have talked about Vmin and Vmax in other videos. So they're a card popping up or a link in the description uh, that looks at them. They're funky, fun to play with units. Um, so I'll just do that plus one rim and then I'm going to do a, I'll do five just so we have a lot of room to play with and let's just change my line height on that as well just so it doesn't get too big, line height of one. And now we can see that it will shrink down, shrink down, shrink down, but when I get to a, uh, you know what, let's make this a three uh, or we'll never hit it if not. So here it maxes out at five and then it's going to start shrinking, 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 and then it locks in at the three rem there. So what that's doing is it's setting five is my maximum size, three is my minimum, and this in the middle is my ideal size. And just, um, you don't necessarily need that. You could just do it like this, but it's nice having this base. So if somebody zooms in and out on something before it reaches the ends of like the, the clamp range, it will still, the zoom level will still affect things. So I always like including the rem in here and you don't need a calc for this. In all of these comparison functions, you can use math without having to use um, calcs in them, which is really handy. Um, but I mentioned that we want to look at type scales. So the resource is called Utopia Fluid Responsive Design and it's utopia.fyi. Once again, it will be in the description below and they have a type scale calculator. So you can choose the widths that you want to work from. So your minimum and your maximum viewport. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to like an 18 and we're going to set this one here up to like a, we'll go, I'm trying to think of a number. We'll, we'll say 18 to 20, 28, just so we have a, a large range. Uh, you can also add more steps and play with the steps here, uh, which are really, really cool. And this is just, we're setting up to have different options um, basically along the way. So at 32, at uh, so this is what we set. We said at the viewport of 18, at the viewport of 320, our font size will be 18. And at the viewport size of 14, uh, 1140, we'll have a 28. 
but then it's also giving us things for different sizes of fonts as long uh, along the way as well and it's outputting everything as you can see here now the way it's doing it by default is using a lot of calcs and some pretty complicated things with custom properties and with the calcs it's actually quite comp uh, with the calcs it's actually really complicated there's media queries involved in it but if you just come and say use clamp it just gives you this nice really simple um, setup here so what we'll do is I'm going to copy this so we can see how to use it and we're going to come over here and we're going to paste it at the very top of our style sheet because uh, it's root and these are all custom properties. So it just means if I want to use any of these steps and these are this is double hyphen because it's step negative two step negative one which just means it's smaller than that base font size I had. And so let's even we'll use all of them we'll say body is my font size and to use it because it's a custom property we're going to do a var and my base my step zero is the base and you don't have you could rename these two but we're going to and I probably would if I was using this in an actual project but we can just say font size is my step zero. So here we could switch this one out for my var step. Uh, we'll go with the step three on that for fun. And then my h3 here could be my font size var step two. And so let's hit save on that. And let's go and see what that's done. My fonts have gotten a lot bigger, but I chose some big numbers on there, especially compared to what I had. But now we'll see that everything is shrinking down. My title is not being affected, but everything is gonna shrink down and hit those minimum sizes there. And then once we get to here, everything will grow and grow and grow and then eventually hit that max size and stop growing. And again, I was very aggressive with the sizes I chose just because I wanted to really show off how it works. But we can see that it works really, really well across wherever I decide to use it. And you don't have to use it everywhere. So if you want something that's just locked in like my title is right now uh, or this header, then that one doesn't change and you just use them wherever you need them to. Uh, another really cool thing with this is right now um, it has a type scale here of 1.2 and so like this major third that's coming up and for whatever reason it's really hard to see on here there's something happened with their select menu and this might be because I'm in Firefox um, but you can actually change the type scale here so you could have the type scale starting at smaller screen sizes and this is one thing I really like with it like a 1.2 and then I can have it over here going all the way up to let's just say a 2 which is very aggressive but it means the larger fonts are going to grow faster than the smaller fonts and this was always something that I had trouble with when I was doing fluid type systems. And one of the reasons I didn't really like setting fluid type on my body, because in general you get this, whereas there's less differentiation when you have small screen sizes and at larger screen sizes, you have more aggressive type scales. So it's really cool that we can set that up and let's, let's shrink this down. Maybe it's an eight, say a 16 to a 21 and we'll stick with that. We'll use clamp. We'll copy this back over. And let's just replace that with this and hit save. And let's go see what that did to our site. And so now you can see <laughs> it got very aggressive because we had that really big um, size. But you can see this is actually, this is maxed out. It's not so big. But then as we're going to shrink this down, you're going to see that this is shrinking much more aggressively. So much faster than the body's font size is actually shrinking, which is getting smaller, but not by a lot. And they're all going to get locked in here. Uh, right there. So you can see like here, this is actually pretty small because that type scale is much smaller. And then as it grows, it's growing much, much faster. So I exaggerated in this. You probably wouldn't want to set things up this way. But just to show you, you have a really nice fluid type scale. It does all the math for you. It figures out everything you want. And then you just use those custom properties as you need to use them. And everything should look pretty good and work really well. And if you think you might use some of these, but responsiveness and making actual responsive layouts is something that you struggle with rather than just typography and these little things like this. I do have a completely free course that you can take called Conquering Responsive Layouts that just looks at helping you create well, responsive layouts. And so if you want to check that one out, it's completely free. The link to that is the first thing just down below. It focuses on how we think responsively when it comes to our layouts, so how things are going to change and sort of setting up good habits to have to make it as easy as possible to deal with responsiveness and to tackle the problems that could come up or just to completely avoid the problems before they even happen. And with that, a really big thank you to my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, Adam, Johnny, Stuart, Tim, and Randy, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.